Welcome to Boating Tips Live with Marine Max, your weekly chat about boating products, service, safety, advice, and a whole lot more. Join the fun by submitting your boating questions answered on air by our knowledgeable captains. Without further ado, let's start the show. What's up, guys? What's up, Captain Keith? How you doing, Nick? Doing good, doing good. Rocking and rolling Monday. How we like it? Boating tips live. Ready to party? Speaking of rocking and rolling, the wind finally stopped today. Yeah, that was a nice been, little uh, six-day blow or so. Yeah, it's been weeks, I think. So yeah, who's that guy uh, sitting next to you? That is the man, the myth, the legend, Raul Bermudez <laughs> from Marine Max Vacations, a whole other side of Marine Max. Um that really is a spectacular program down in the British Virgin Islands and the Bahamas, mainly focusing on our Aquila power catamarans, which, you know, we get to experience quite a bit of in St. Pete and Clearwater. So i um, really excited to hear about this program. And thanks for, thanks for joining us, Raul. Thank you for having me. So you're actually the vice president of the yacht charter part of the business, correct? That's correct. Yep. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's a great gig. Some people say it's the best job in the world and I tell them it is most of the time, <laughs> but there are some, uh, stressful times like COVID. <laughs> yeah, not exactly a lot of vacations going on there over the yeah. past year, but it's, it's coming back. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's very strong already for the future, but. So before we get going, Raul and Keith, um, I just want to remind everybody, um, this is a live broadcast, which means if you type a question into the comments, we're looking at them and we're going to answer them in real time as soon as we can get to them. So if you have a question about the Charter Yacht Ownership Program, about Raul, about his role in Marine Max Vacations, um, now's the time to ask it and we're going to answer you as soon as we can. Also... You know where to find us if you can't join live. I know a lot of people are busy. It's Monday. It's during the week. It's the middle of the work day. You can catch this podcast afterwards. We're going to go through those questions as well on Facebook, YouTube, any streaming platform for podcasts, including iHeartRadio, Spotify, Apple Music. We're there. And we look forward to getting back around to those even when we're not live. Got to get that out of the way. Let people know we're looking. We've got some great questions coming in from YouTube. I'm monitoring a YouTube chat. I'm sure that there's some great ones too on Facebook. Want to thank everybody for watching with us right now and really excited for today's episode. Hey, Brian. Glad, glad you're here, man. Brian Draps on with us again. Awesome. Hey, Nick. Glad you made it on. Really cool. Just It was a couple hours ago. So I was over at Clearwater Beach. I just got back to the store. I was running a Ocean Alexander over there. And Came back, sitting here, is eating my lunch, and and this guy walks up, and you know I've got you know my little Captain Keith you know area down there and it's training area and stuff, and he goes, hey Captain Keith, he goes, uh, I'm a big fan, he goes, I'm from Kansas City, I go Kansas City, he goes, yep, he goes, my name's Jim, he goes, my wife and I are getting ready to to move over here, and we came over here to Clearwater to to check you guys out, but uh, he goes, I really want to tell you something, he goes, I appreciate, it. he goes, you guys three o'clock every Monday. He goes, you and Nick, uh, he goes, I really, really appreciate and like what you guys do, the information we get out there and all that stuff. So I thought it was pretty cool, you know, we're just sitting yeah. here at the store and, you know, out of out of the nowhere, you know, Jim from Kansas City. Thanks, man. That's awesome, man. So, Keith, you've done this a lot longer than I have as far as, uh, you know, the whole Marine Max thing and, and all your content out there. Tell me, have you ever signed autographs? Like seriously, have you ever signed an autograph? <laughs> no, no, I, I no. Oh, you, come on, no, they're you, gonna, you, they're gonna, have you ever been asked for an autograph? They'll be so valuable, right? One day, if I don't put a whole lot of them out there, so so no, I, I try to try to lay off of that. Yeah, I should probably lay off of it too. That's a good point, <laughs> but that's awesome. So, Raul, let's uh let's dive right into charter. So you've got a long career in a charter business even before Marine Max. So how long have you been in a charter business and what kind of brought you, you know, where you are right now? So I was like 10 when I got started, but I've been doing it for about 22 years now, 23. 
Um, this is my 10th year anniversary, actually, a couple of weeks ago. I saw that. Remax. Congrats. Yeah. Thanks. So it's been uh, it's been a wild ride. Yeah, but I've been uh, fortunate. Um, I was actually recruited. I was working for a rider truck rental at the time in Denver and got a call from a recruiter to come down to Florida and work in the charter business. They flew me down to the Virgin Islands uh, for a second interview. And uh, it was very easy to negotiate. I called my wife. It was snowing in Denver. I was like, honey, I think we can do this. We're moving. And that was it. And it's been 20, 22, 23 years. Two of the kids were born in Colorado and two were here. Actually, Captain Keith did a delivery for us uh, yep. before I joined Marie Max. Yep. I met Captain Keith. Uh, we had a C Ray, a Sunday. C Ray Sundeck. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Kept so it I am going to ask you. I'm going to ask you for the autograph. That's right. <laughs> Kept it at the harbor. I am going to ask him for that autograph. <laughs> mm. So, yeah. Whale, so I, and then a whaler after that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And then you won't believe it. I, I just sold the whaler and bought something else. Yeah. A, uh, a deck, a uh, tri, trimaran. So we're Congrat gonna, we're gonna... Con congrats on the tri tune, Raul. You got a good yeah. one. Yeah, <laughs> good, good. Can't wait to use it. It's basically oh, yeah. a, it's a baby Aquila, essentially. I mean, that's, that's it. That's what that's it is. It. Exactly, exactly. Can't wait. So, Raul, so yes, go ahead. Really is charter yacht ownership? Is it like a timeshare on the water? What? I mean, broad spectrum. We're gonna dive in a little deeper. Yeah. What so, is it? So, so a couple of things. So, obviously, Marine Max Vacations is a charter operation. So, we have boats where we rent out to people in uh, Tortola, British Virgin Islands. We also have the Bahamas, and we have partnership locations in multiple places where we have Aquilas, but we don't necessarily run the operation. So, we have. Uh, the Pacific Northwest, we have Australia, Greece, and Croatia, where there's some Aquilas, maybe just one or two, but we have a partnership there. So the whole model, the way it works is we sell, all these boats are privately owned by individuals that enjoy boating and going down to the islands. So <clears throat> I'll give you the five second version. You can own a boat and there's different ways you can own it. There are two different programs. <clears throat> down on the islands and we take care of the boat so two transactions take place you buy the boat you're the owner so it's not timeshare we don't have multiple owners per boat now if you and your buddy want to go in and create your own little company and and uh, do that you can do that but we we you know one order per boat and then you sign a management agreement the management agreement states how you know what happens how we maintain the boat your rights of usage to the boat how we insure the boat so it's a yeah, you know, ten-page document that talks about um, your rights, our rights, how you know what happens at the end of the program, which is very important. Um, so, so that's that's the basic short version of, of the uh, of the ownership program, and we have a lot of people that buy them for a number of reasons. But some people are planning to go retire in a couple of years, you know, three years, four years, five years. So this is a way for them to start learning how to use the boat, use the boat, go on vacation, and uh, then they take the boat out. So if someone buys a boat, are they able to, how many times are they able to, to use the boat? Is it in a calendar year? Do they get X number of weeks on the boat or, or how does that work? Yeah, so we have two programs. One is a uh, program where we actually guarantee them a payment every single month, whether the boat charters or not. So that's a fixed payment option. That program limits you to up to nine weeks of usage, depending on how you're going to use the, the weeks. Um, so, but even, and most people ask, am I going to get paid if I use my weeks? Yes, you still get paid if you use your weeks. Um, so that's the safest, easiest. We cover, and with that program, we cover all the oper operational expenses, maintenance, dockage, insurance. So you have zero operations uh, expenses while the boat is in the program. When you go use a boat, you pay a small cleaning fee to go use it. Um, the other program is more of a, a revenue share program <clears throat> where the owner takes... Um, takes the expenses, but they get a big chunk of the revenue. So typically it's a 75-25 split. The owner gets 75%, 
should more than cover, you know, depending on how much the, they use a boat, it should more than cover all their expenses and still give them money, uh, positive cash flow. That program gives you a little more flexibility in usage because as long as you know that while you're using the boat, you're not producing revenue, it's okay with us. So two different programs, one of them, you know, there are also a potential tax savings out there for some of those programs. You got to check with your accountant. We're not accountants. So, and everybody's situation is different, but the revenue share program can uh, potentially uh, qualify for tax savings. <clears throat> How long are these boats in the program? I know that there's certain charter programs that might even have boats that are on their second or third tour, I guess you can call it. But in your program and Marine Max's program, I mean, they're only pretty much new boats in there. I mean, they're boats that are no older than five years old or a certain amount of hours on them so i mean what is a boat and a charter yacht first of all i guess what is the timeline for charter yacht ownership in a british Virgin, british virgin islands and the bahamas and what happens after that yep so a lot of good questions there so the when we originally started we were doing a five-year program with a guaranteed program uh on the charter side most people that go rent and charter these boats want newer boats of course and they actually pay a premium. So we've reduced the program to a three-year if you go the guarantee route. Right. And then, if, and then at the end of the three years, you have options. You can trade it you can and stay in the program. We have a lot of repeat owners. You can uh, list it with us for brokerage. We have a huge, as you know, demand for these boats. The key is the right having the right boat, the Aquilas. Right. Uh, or you can take it out, keep paying the note if you finance, and go cruising. And then even our fourth option is there are a couple of second tier charter companies out there that are dying to get their hands on these Aquila boats and they can, you can put them in those programs. And even with us, you can potentially extend after the three years, another two years under the revenue share program. So you could stay five years in the program. <clears throat> so we have, uh, you know, your, your question of what happens at the end. So those are the options that the owners have. Some people have gone cruising. Some people have, like I said, a big percentage, probably 30 to eh, maybe 40% are trading and staying in the program because they love going down there. It's hassle-free, nothing to worry about. Let's talk about your role for a minute. We're focusing on charter today, but from my standpoint, being in sales, I deal with you a lot as a broker, and you always have Aquila's coming in. It, we're going to hit on Aquila Power Catamarans a little bit more later in the episode but anybody that's been in a boating market any especially for a boat that is such in demand such as an aquila whether that's a 36 44 or a 54 knows that they are extremely hard to come across right now and there's a long way to get a new one be and rightfully so then you have raul that comes along and raul's constantly brokering boats out of the charter program that you know they're going to be used but you know they're maintained phenomenally and there's a lot of great opportunities there that Raul has a lot of stuff coming on the market before even a lot of people know of them for all sorts of Aquilas. And it's really helped out a lot of customers of mine that really want an Aquila and they think they can't get one. Raul's got one. So, so tell us a little bit about your role as a broker on the Aquila side of things. Yeah. So again, so the, so the boats come out every three, sometimes five years if we kept them there. So ahead of time, we know when those boats are going to come out. So the management agreement says, hey, we can actually start listing these boats six months in advance so you're not sitting around with the boat. Um, so that's what happens. So it's about, Or we take trades. So the folks that are trading and getting a new one will take that on and go through the whole Marine Max process to, to you know check all the systems, make it a used boat and sell it. So that's what's happening. And then we in the Virgin Islands, we have almost 50 boats. So Every single year we have, you know, 10 boats. If you rotate them every year, you know, mm -hmm. that's without even growing. So, so that's where all these boats are coming from. Um, <clears throat> so what's that now, maintenance, what's that maintenance program look like though? So, so you're rolling these boats around over there, right? So there yeah. go, somebody takes it out for a week, 10 days, two weeks, the boat comes back to the Marina. Then 
do you guys go through the boats and, and just, you know, before you're refitting it for the next group that's going out? Oh, absolutely. So I believe we're the only charter company. So a lot of charter companies will turn a boat around and basically just clean it six hours. They'll do a say what they call a same day turnaround. Charter okay. ends at 11 and somebody else is already on at 6 p.m. Marimax totally different. We actually block the boat a whole day, a full day. So generators usually, which gets used the most, right. gets an oil change right away. For the engines, of course, we keep track of whatever the manufacturer uh, intervals are. So every 100 hours, they get a uh, oil change also. But yeah, there's a whole process, a whole team. We have about 30 to 40 employees down there um, that their whole job is to you know, take care of the customer, but also technicians, mechanics. Um, a lot of people ask, that was a good question, Keith, of you know, how, how used are these boats going to be? Well, if you've been to the Virgin Islands, you know that it's beautiful, but all the distances are very short. So you, you're basically island hopping. You're running 15, 20, 30. You know, the longest run you're going to make is maybe an hour. Uh, so you're not putting a lot of engine hours. Actually, you know, the, the first company I worked for was a sailboat charter company. And I believe the power boats are actually putting less hours, engine hours on them than the sailboats because they get there a little quicker. Right. Yeah, that's true. With the power boats. Now, the generators, I will tell you, get a lot of usage. Power boaters, you know, the way we've designed these Aquila power boats, a um, little bit of history. This whole thing started because Bill McGill went down there and actually chartered a boat from a competitor and said, we can do this and we can do it better. We're going to do it the Marimax way. And that's where the Aquila boats, you know, part of the start of the Aquila boats and the equipment that we put on the boats. Um, so these boats are, are made to be used that much. You can't just take a regular uh, recreational boat and put it into a charter fleet. It just won't work. So the Aquila boats, as you guys both know, are easy to maintain. You know, engines, generator, everything's outside. You can walk around, get them. You're not lifting a bed to check the oil. Right. So that that makes a big difference. It's it's how well is the boat built? Um, is it been built for that usage? And then do you have the right staff maintained? So we have a total different philosophy than most charter operators. We maintain the heck out of the boats while the boat is in the fleet. So we don't have to spend a ton of money at the end when the owner wants to take that boat back. So it should be easy. Basically, we say is... You can come anytime you want, and the boat should be in great shape. And mm -hmm. that's that's the philosophy. Okay. So, so an owner has a boat in charter with you, and a and a bilge pump goes, an impeller goes, or this or that. Marine Max is absorbing the cost of that. Those yeah, items. If they, if they do a guarantee program, absolutely. Yeah, we take care of that. You won't even know that we've changed that bilge pump or change batteries, whatever. We just take care of it, get the boat running, uh, get moving again. So that's the beauty of that program. Plus, um, they get a check. Plus, they get a check. Yeah. Every sounds like month. you're sounds like you're taking all the bad stuff out of boating. <laughs> I, I wouldn't call it bad. Is this boating? It happens, right? Any right. tour you have, yeah, it happens. But it takes it, it alleviates you know having to figure out oh why did that break or yeah uh, things things do go bad. Batteries get drained. Uh, okay. So we take care of that. the guarantee program. If if you want hassle free, that's the way to go. Um, and you know, and we you, see it, yeah, we see it on the used boats all the time. I mean, it's all in maintenance. I'd rather see personally a captain maintained, professionally maintained boat with a thousand hours on it that's five years old than one that sat in a dock for five years right. and has 20 hours on it. Oh, absolutely. Yep. Yep. Even in the summertime, I mean, we yeah. have people that just go around and make sure they start the engine, start the generator, everything works. You know, we have water makers on our boats. Uh, so we got to check those all the time. That's probably our, our highest maintenance expense. It's just filters on the water makers. Um, yeah. But that's one of the things that makes another thing that makes Marine Max different. Let's talk about the lineup of boats really quick, Raul. I know that you have a huge role in, in Aquila Power Catamarans, Aquila Power Catamarans with Marine Max and a partnership. So let's talk about your lineup, what the different experiences are. Keith and I deal with it on retail every single day. People getting 36s, 44s, now 54s. We're going to hit on that too. What kind of different experiences are you guys 
really going after on a different models in charter yacht ownership? Like how, pretty much what I'm asking is how is somebody that owns a, a, a 36 in charter yacht ownership, what does that look like versus owning a 44 and so on? So you're basically asking who's buying what boat. You know, we have uh, yeah. typically on the 36 or they're going to be a little bit younger. That's probably, you know, their first step. And then they'll move up to the 44, similar to what they do here at home. They start with a smaller boat and move right. up. Um, people that like outboards, that's the difference in the 36 because it does have outboards. Um now, once you get to more families, or if you want to go with a lot of friends, you start getting to the 44, the 48, which we no longer produce, the four cabins. So basically what we're trying to do is create an avenue for, depending on your size of the party, we have the right boat for you. If it's only two of you, you can probably take out the 36. If you have two couples, three couples, you move up to the, to the 44. If you have four couples or two families, sometimes we've seen that with kids, they take out the 48. So like when I go, I have to take out the 48 because I have a ton of kids. Um, <laughs> as yeah. Keith knows. <clears throat> and now, of course, we're going to have the 54. So it, it all depends on, on how many people typically go with you. And that's what I, the advice I give people, because some people, <clears throat> you know, they ask, what, what boat should I buy? If, how many people are going to go with you typically? You know, 90% of the time, is it just going to be the two of you? Then you can look at a smaller boat. <clears throat> That's kind of just it falls in line perfect here. We just got a question from Stephanie on YouTube. It says uh, she may have missed the info, but what size Aquilas are available for charter? Yeah, so right now we have uh, 36, 44, the whole lineup, 48. We still have a couple left in the fleet. And the very first 54, which we're going to talk about a little later, it's on its way down there now. So that's that's exciting times for, uh, for the Marine Max vacations. And then I got another question here um, from Lex. He says, uh, what are the advantages chartering a power cat versus a sail cat? It's a good question. So first of all, <clears throat> not just any power cat. So I'm going to answer that as the difference in chartering a Marine Max Vacations Aquila power cat, because there are other power cats out there. Most of them are sailboats converted to power. So the big difference is these power cats, again, they've been designed. You know, Bill McGill was involved with a couple of the people. The designers are power boaters. They've been designed as power boats. The hulls on the Aquilas are much rounder, bigger. So you have walk-around beds. Uh, the way that, again, the boats have been designed, everything mechanical is outside. So it's, it's just night and day. The amount of room, the amount of storage that you're going to find on these Aquila power cats it's night and day compared to a sailboat. Sailboats have to be, you know, narrow hulls so they can cut through the water. There's hardly any storage. Layout-wise, when you look at the 44, 48, you have a huge salon, nice next to the galley. So on a sailboat, typically that's going to be disrupted because you got a big mass in the middle of the boat, <clears throat> um, and it's got to be built that way structurally. Uh, but from a space point of view, comfort. The power cat is going to give you a lot more room, space, comfort um, to, to live aboard. And then, of course, the, like I said, the Marine Max boats have been equipped with water makers, you know, all the stuff that power boaters want. And that translates over, too, into the private market as well. You know, the Aquilas that in their DNA are built, you know, they are charter boat originally over translated translated over into private ownership on the retail side of things that carries over. You wash these boats. Everything drains nice. They're meant to be beat up. You spill something. You got kids on the boat. You mash some Cheerios into the seat. It's not the end of the world. You're okay. They're easy to operate, easy to hop on even a 44, which is, it can be intimidating for somebody that hasn't handled boats their whole lives to, to hop on a 44 Aquila and say, where do I start? How do I start this boat up? I started up. How do I drive this boat? Keith, how many times have you dealt with people like that? And then after a week of training, it, it's like, you know, they're getting on and off the boat by themselves or teaching other people. Then they're fully confident operating such a big boat by themselves. So we see it both ways with these boats being charter boats. They're that easy to own and operate on the private side of things too. Cause you don't need to be a rocket scientist to use them. 
Well, look right out your window right there where you're at, Nick. I mean, John and his family there just took delivery of a 44 Aquila. Oh, yeah. I spent Friday afternoon with them while the family flew in. They hopped on the boat, and the way the basin is there where Nick is, he's got a floating dock, which makes it nice, but the wind's blowing in out of the east, and it's just got that boat pinned up against the dock. Yeah. And the, the guy that just took ownership of this boat, he goes, Captain Keith, he goes, how, how, what are we going to do? How are we going to get out of here? Because I don't have a bow thruster. I said, you don't need it. I said, those engines are set so far apart in these Aquilas that, you know, you just walk it, walk the dog, one in and out of gear, this and that, and that thing, you know, spins back around. And I don't care if it's a single engine, mono haul, a, a, a cat boat, whatever. If you can back into the wind and back into the current, you're going to have the most control. And, you know, when Captain Sandy and I were talking on an interview, same thing. We were talking mm -hmm. about that. So. Once you get the boat swung and these Aquilas, those engines are so set so far apart, it just makes it so easy. I mean, it's the maneuvering of it. It's unbelievable. So we backed the boat out of there, spun it around, took off. He got behind the wheel. And that afternoon we came back in, he pulled in and docked it. He spent Saturday with another captain, ran the boat all himself. He's good to go, man. I mean, they're, they're, they're loving life. Yeah, they're actually easier to operate than a mud hole. So, you know, a couple of things that came up that I thought I should cover. So a lot of these people, you know, or people in general talk about charter boats. These Aquila power cats that we're putting into the charter fleet are spec'd out identical to the retail boats. Mm -hmm. Right. So a lot of the charter companies typically would dummy down the boats. We don't do that. Um, so a lot of the uh, retail private owners even usually go and charter first to see how well they're going to oh, like yeah. the boat, the great figure idea. out what options, figure out, hey, what options am I going to add? So you know, the only thing we don't put on them is things that we don't need. We don't need radar down there. We don't need a spotlight because they don't operate at night. But otherwise, like I said, it's all the same equipment, same engines, same dinghy david. So these are not, you know, dummy down boats. And uh, that's part of the reason, too, they're very popular in the back end on the retail side when they come out of the fleet because it's a standard boat, it just has a couple of hours. You know, a boat that's coming out of uh, three years. So typically that's the other thing people ask, how many hours is it gonna have? Well, like I said, the distances are very short. So they're only doing 200, maybe 300 hours a year of use. Wow. Now the generators do get quite a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, so you will have, you know, by the end of three years, we have 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 hours, depending. Power boaters like their air conditioning. So that thing does run. But that's the other thing. We haven't dummy down the generators. We don't We don't get the smallest generator you can. We actually get the biggest that we can fit into these boats. So, you know, that way people don't have to power manage. That way it doesn't work as hard. That, that way it's going to last longer. So those are the differences between Marine Max and the Aquilas and, and all the other operators so i've got a funny story when i when i first had my opportunity for a job at marine max st pete i was really really nervous and really scared because you know marine max st pete see aquila hub you you come into our marina there's at least a dozen 44s here at any given time and and i remember losing a lot of sleep the night before because i was like man if I go in there and Joshua, the general manager, says, "All right, you're a captain. Let's uh, let's see, let's see how good you are," I I had this irrational thought in my head of him saying, "Let's. I need you to get on that big scary Aquila 44 and take it out of its slip and put it back in." And I thought that was going to happen. And it's funny looking back now. I, I can parallel park an Aquila 44 with probably a foot to spare on each side, but I, I still can't parallel park my truck. So. So, so that's that. So just to give you an idea, you do not need to be a rock star captain. And that's a question that, you know, I'm sure Raul gets a lot on the charter side of things is, hey, do I need a captain with a boat? Do I need a charter boat with a captain? A lot of uh, most people do it by themselves. Isn't that right? Yeah, a big percentage of them. So depending on your experience level. So I'll tell you a little bit about the chartering. So when you want to go charter, you complete a simple resume and give it to your experience. Not everybody has a license, but some people, as you know, will have 50 foot sea rays out here, but they don't yeah. have a captain's license. Um, so complete the resume and we'll tell you. We also offer a program when you get down there where we put a uh, captain on board for a couple of hours just to make sure you feel comfortable. We take you out of the slip. We bring you back in, right? That's his most stressful time in a, in a just boating in general is getting out of the marina and getting back in. 
So we take all that stress out of it. We send you a bunch of videos ahead of time so you're familiar with the boat and the operation of the boat. Um, like you said, it's very these Aquilas are very simple to operate. Um, but yeah, so that's how you can kind of find out. Now I can tell you this, even when I go on vacation sometimes, if I have if you have a bunch of kids and I don't want to be, I mean, my kids have been going since they were a pack and play, right? Um, if I don't want that stress of watching the boat and watching for kids, hire a captain. What the heck? It, yeah. it only costs you 200 bucks a day. They do yeah. take a cabin, but sometimes too, the experience you have with the local captains taking you to places you've never even heard of. I mean, like the hidden coves and the nice local restaurant that you didn't know about because everybody goes to the tourist spots. It's definitely worthwhile for, you know, first time even. I have a couple of owners that always take a captain and they own interesting. Yeah. That's an interesting. So it all case. depends. And definitely if you're going first time or if you go into a bigger boat, hire a captain. Some of the captains, even, you know, if you wanted to, you can request one that goes home at night, just drop him off somewhere where he can go find a place to sleep. But um, yeah, but they are easier to, to, to uh, drive, but it's probably 50, 50 captain, no captain. And then of course we also have a program where it's all inclusive. Captain, yeah. chef, all your food, all your meals, and that will be on the fifty-four. Hey, all right, Chuck so watching with us here, I want to say hey to Chuck and uh, hey Chuck. Big got another guy question there. here from from Paul here. Um, says is Marine Max going to add more locations? I assume he's talking about the charter, but uh, he may not have been in here on the first part of the show where you were talking about some of the other partners we've got throughout the throughout the world, actually. Right. All right, so I'll ed educate everybody on the whole charter business. So, yes, I mean, the, well, first of all, we don't necessarily want to be the largest. We just want to make sure we stay the best, right? We believe okay. that we provide the best boats, best service. So that's, you know, that's no easy task. So we want to concentrate on the BVIs. We're in the Bahamas right now. And then some of these other places, yes, we'll, we'll look at it. But it's very difficult to start or cost not cost-effective to start a new operation with a small fleet. So in some of these places, we'll partner with people that are already sailboat operators mainly, and then they'll manage the boats for us and they'll do that operation. Because even if we start five boats, you still need a base manager, you need customer service, you need all those folks. And that's tough to, to produce enough revenue to cover all that expense. Now you get to 10 boats, 15 boats, and then it starts making sense. So for example, in the Bahamas, we've partnered with somebody that we did the reverse for them when they went to the BBIs. Now they're helping us out in, in the Bahamas. So they're managing seven of our boats right now, and they have about 12 sailboats. So <clears throat> as we get bigger enough to, well, if the relationship and they do all the things that we're asking to, we'll keep it that way. If not, eventually, as we get bigger, we may have to hire our own staff and do our own operation. But yeah, so we have Pacific Northwest is the same way, Australia, Greece, and Croatia. And then some of these other places too, the seasons are so short, like in the Mediterranean, it's you know very short seasons. So you, you gotta make sure you have a different program and, and it works. You need somebody to go over and check out one of those ones in Croatia. Bro. There you go. Right, right here, Keith, man. let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Hey, before we end this episode off with the 54, which we're going to be talking about, we have had quite a few questions come in on YouTube. Some good questions, too. We have Buck Naked here. Don't know if that's his name, but he says it's a good question. He says, so how often does a 36 have to be rented to pay for the upkeep, et cetera? How much time would that leave for me to use the boat? This is on a 36 kilo. Okay. So the 36, again, it depends on the program. So we're taking that risk on the 36. If you go the guarantee program, if you go the variable program, it all depends. So most, but usually you need minimum about, I don't know, 14 weeks. Uh, you'll be used after 14 weeks, you start making money, cover your expenses, plus make a little bit of money now. And that's in the Bahamas, for example, which Bahamas is a little bit shorter season. We run our numbers based on doing minimum 15. Most boats will do 20 to 25 weeks. That's the other misconception. These boats don't go mm -hmm. out 52 weeks a year. Uh, there's maintenance that we have to get done. There are typical gaps within reservations. You know, somebody ends on a Sunday. Well, then, 
very difficult for, or Monday difficult for somebody to start on a Tuesday because you can't start any day of the week. So sometimes we create gaps, unfortunately, so the boats will sit there. Um, yeah. Once we get to, you know, say a boat doing 30 weeks of usage, we probably need more boats because you're leaving the typical, you know, in any destination, you have about 12 weeks that you know you're going to sell out around Christmas, New Year's, Thanksgiving, Easter, you know, those are going to have whatever boat you have, they're going to sell out. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's just filling in all those other gaps. The Virgin Islands, the seasons are a little longer. So you get all the people from up north going in the wintertime. And then, you know, summertime, you get a lot of the families. So, but typically around 14, 15 weeks to cover all your expenses, make a little bit of money. After that, you're making more. Now, if you're taking Christmas, New Year's, those high periods as a user, as a owner, you're going to produce less revenue, right? Because you know mm -hmm. those are the ones that are going to sell out. So if you do the variable revenue share program, if you do the guarantee program, you don't care because we're going to sell you a check no matter what. Yeah. Yeah, that's an interesting take on the two programs. Mm -hmm. Got two more questions here. This one's from Angel Suarez. On an own charter boat, are we limited to the 10 passengers? I have a family of 17 with four grandchildren under six years old. Would be a, we would travel together on the 54. Most times it will be 12. So I guess what are the limitations for the different size boats and, and who sets those limitations? Great. So, so that's a great question. Uh, so there are limitations, laws that you have to obey by. And it, in the Virgin Islands specifically, if you boat, if the boat has more than twelve passengers, you're not considered a commercial boat. Hmm. So you have to. So the boat's got to be different specs, different signage, uh, rail height, uh, all kinds of stuff that it has to change to do that. Um, I mean, it's it's very difficult because we do have a, a thirty six ferry boat, a couple of them operating in the yeah. Virgin Islands, and it's a totally different requirement. And then, of course, if you're in the U.S. waters, you got to go by the Jones Act 12 pack if you hire a captain. But yeah, so the 30, 36 max is six legally uh, for sleeping aboard, right? During the day, you can do day trips close to shore, not a problem. For the 44, max is eight. You got the three cabins, you can sleep two more in the salon. The 48, you can do 12. You got, oh, sorry, uh, four cabins. So you got eight plus two, 10. ten. And then the 54, you can do, t really, you can do 12 max. Mm -hmm. we're, at, we're, we're actually limiting it to 11. You get the five cabins. Um, and then there, the salon does not convert on the 54. But there is mm -hmm. a small skipper cabin up front in the bow. That's So 11 on the 54. Good and we got to go by. We got to go by those rules. We got to make sure we have yeah. all the life jackets on board. The other thing you got to think about on these boats is we spent probably twenty, thirty grand on equipment, linens, you know, coffee mugs, uh, forks. So we got to make sure we have enough for for the people on board that are going to be spending a week on board. Good stuff. That was a good question, Angel. One more question from Buck Naked again. How does the rental program affect my insurance on the boat? How does insurance work? So when it's in a program, we actually, we have a uh, policy for all the boats. So if you're under the guaranteed is included, we cover it. If it's a revenue share program, we just tell you what that cost is for the insurance. So, but no, you regular insurance companies would probably have a hard time uh, knowing if you're going to be chartering the boat. Yeah. Yeah. I, I figured that's a question that comes up with a lot too, with different charter programs, whether it's on through Marine yeah. Max or not. So, all right. We've got about 15, 20 minutes left here. And if Gabriel's watching, he's going to kill me. But as of right now, at this moment, there are only two people in the entire world that have sold and delivered a 54 Aquila, and they both happen to be on this screen right now. <laughs> and uh, I'm one of them. Poll number one, which is in private ownership, 
and <laughs> Raul sold hull number two. This is a boat that has about 40 hulls right now pre-sold. The the hottest yacht arguably ever released, a 54 Aquila. Aquila really flexed their muscles with this yacht, stepping it up with quality, space, innovativeness, and everything. And we're almost seeing equal success on the private side of things and the charter side of things. We're going to get into the private side. Probably we can do a whole episode of that. But what is this 54, or is, I guess you're calling it the, the 545, 54.5, whatever it is in charter. How does this look for the Marine Max charter program, the Marine Max vacation program? What kind of experience is the 54 providing, the 54 Aquila providing that we didn't offer before? T- tell me about what this looks like for everybody. Uh, well, the, uh, you know, I don't want to talk that the 44 and the 48 have been great vessels. Again, compared yeah. to anything else out there in the charter market, those are, you know, the best top of the line for that size category. The 54 is just like you said, another level step up uh, from a, a finish point of view layout. I mean, it's massive. It's beautiful. That fly bridge. Oh, man. Um, yeah. The, the, you know, just the, the room, the comfort. You know, you got a 54 with a full beam master up front, king size bed. How many charter mm-hmm. boats in that size do you see with a king size bed? And then the other cabins, the guest cabins, are similar to what the 48s were. You can yep. still walk around the bed, <clears throat> right? So you're not jumping, you know, you're not having to jump up to the bed like some of the other boats. Uh, walk around very, very comfortable cabins. Uh, <clears throat> that's another key feature on the Aquilas. You're not sharing the heads. You're not sharing the bathrooms. So every cabin has its own bathroom, which is great when um, when you're in charter with family or friends. That's a good <clears throat> point, too. I walked a 85-foot mono hull, which was an awesome boat. It's one of the yacht brands we carry. And when you're talking about that, that's another benefit to the catamarans that we didn't we didn't hit on before. That privacy you have, I mean, completely two split halls, full beam master up front, crew quarters in the back on a 54. Even if you're on an 85 or 100 foot mono hull, you're still almost always sharing a wall with somebody. On a 44 or 54, you're on complete separate sides of the boat. You can really only get that privacy in a catamaran. And like you're talking about there, the size of the staterooms on each hall and you're on a completely different side of the boat with somebody you're never sharing a wall with somebody on that boat and that's a lot to be said for that lost your mic raul raul we lost your mic well, got there you uh, go. we got you back all right i was re- coughing re- so i put it up here rewind so, about 10 seconds <laughs> so uh, i said that's the other great thing on the uh the akilas right that salon where you're sitting another key feature you're sitting in that salon and the visibility you can see all the way around and even in the cabins versus a monohull a monohull sometimes you feel like you're going into a dungeon right yeah. it's very dark i mean this you just i mean it's incredible the the view the windows again the flybridge is one of my favorite spots on that 54 yeah, man. Picture myself sitting up there barbecuing, right? Um, the oh, the other key feature in the Aquilas, of course, how easy it is to get around the boat, right? Oh, you have that Portuguese flybridge. You can go down from the uh, flybridge down to the bow, so you're not running down and around. Um, so it's very easy to drop anchor, pick up a mooring ball. Um, you know, guys like you guys easily just you can single handle the boat. Great visibility. There is. I mean, bow to stern, every single aspect of the boat, they have knocked it out of the park. The bow. All of that real estate up there is now usable with seats, cup holders, a whole nine yards. You make your way around the sides, like you said. I mean, they're at least, I'd say... I don't know the measurements, but you, there's no walking sideways with buckets on the side of a 54. No, even a big guy like me can walk straight. Oh, man. I mean, I can't tell you how many mono hauls I've been on, like 64, 68 footers that you're turning sideways on. Mm-hmm. You go back, right? The amount of shade on an aft deck of a 54 is something that I couldn't really fathom from the renderings until you get on a boat where it's like, wow, you've got a whole other area back there. 
that you can hang out in and enjoy your dinner, bringing your way all the way up to the top of the boat with that Portuguese bridge that Raul talked about. You can walk all the way around with a full sky deck up there too with another grill. A lot of them have the option for the the fully enclosed bridge, which is really luxurious or not. I mean, you're down in British Virgin Islands. There's a Euro style where it's just the three panes of glass up on the front, which I think looks awesome, by the way, when I saw hall number two get here. You make your way inside the boot in the size of the salon with that island. I remember one of the first trips I did on 5401. And we're on our way back from the Vinoy, and there's four grown adults lounging out, sleeping on different couches. And, and that's when I thought, man, at that moment right there, I said, this boat is worth the hype. It is 100% worth all the hype that it has created. And, uh, and it's exciting. For sure. Hey, so I've lost my kids on a 48 before. I can only imagine <laughs> on, a 50, on a 54. I mean, there's so many places, like you said. So even if you had four couples, five couples, yeah, you can spray it out and not see each other. I mean, it's it's just huge. And it's, it's laid 50, out. Go ahead. No, go ahead. It's a Is 54. A 50, it's a question for you. Is a 54 in charter five or four stay rooms? It's a five stay room. So you got the big master full beam up or not almost full beam up front. You got a huge guest cabin on the port side, and then you have two on the starboard side, and then you have the uh, bunks and aft, which will be great if you do hire a captain or kids. Mm -hmm. That's where my the, the the youngest one wants to go hang out. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. We actually had a question from Lex on here on on the uh, Facebook side of it about the different layouts, whether it's private use or charter use on a 54. Yeah. So most of the ones going into the charter are the five stay room ones. Um, it just produces more revenue because there's really not many options out there for charter with five cabins. So most of the 54s will be the five stay room one, uh, especially if they choose the guarantee program, it will be the five cabin one. Uh, we can look at potentially a four cabin one um, variable where the where the owner covers the, the the expenses, and that was you just reminded me too. So some people have called saying, "Hey, I bought this boat, and can you put it into our, our charter fleet?" We only put brand new boats mm -hmm. that have been purchased to go into those programs. So we don't take, and then we only take Aquilas too. So it's only the uh, because you got to remember, we have, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of dollars in parts down there. So all the boats are pretty much spec'd out the same, same generator, same engine, so we can carry spare parts. We can't That's afford to have have different systems and different parts because, you know, if something breaks, we got to be able to repair it. All right. So got a good question just rolled in here before we wrap this up. Um, it's from Paul Jagnick. He goes, can you talk about the exit plan at the end of the ownership? And how many years is the boat in charter? So, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so new programs are three years with a guarantee program. You have the option then to extend to up to two years under the revenue share or variable program. Um, exit plan, you have options. We cover this so you can either trade and stay into the program. We even have an option that you can trade into anything brand new Marie Max offers, right? Even oh, cool. in the States, in the States, if you wanted to buy, you know, something else when you get back here, you can do that. Uh, you can list it with us to brokerage if you decide you don't want to keep it. Or you can uh, finish, if you finance, finish paying your note and go cruising. So you have multiple, or, and the other one is, you can look for uh, what we call second tier charter companies, the guys that will take yeah. all their boats into their fleets. <clears throat> so there you so go, you have, Paul. You got multiple multiple options to to wrap it up. And we typically plan like six months before uh, the boat leaves the fleet, so we kind of have a plan in place before it leaves. All right, we got about five minutes, but there is some awesome 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 questions here on youtube so i think it's worth giving them a rapid fire so we're gonna we're gonna answer these questions really quick because they're really really good and i and i want to get them answered one this is for you raul 
Dr. Brett Rybotsky. Raul is a great guy. So they say. <laughs> <laughs> he says, what's the story from an with what's the story with an upgrade from a 44 to a 54? Go. So we can do it. Let's do it, Brett. Uh so Brett. <laughs> We can definitely do it. Uh, right now, we got to plan ahead because I only have one boat left for the next basically 12 months because all the other ones have been pre-sold into charter, the 50s. So we do need to plan, and then it's probably going to be a 2023 event or late 2022 event. And, of course, the 44 is in high demand too. So if yeah. you decide to uh, trade that one in, you'll do uh, very well. It's it. People got to be looking way ahead right now. Yeah. You have to plan. Yeah. Plan. Then we've got, we've got buck naked again. That says with a 36 hydrofoil running three hundreds, how many hours can you put on the engine before it needs to rebuild? So buck it's uh, I mean, it's the same. It's the same as just a regular 300. Your maintenance is every hundred hours or your annuals. It's all in maintenance. I mean, I've, there's plenty of charter guys running those, those new 300 V eights with four or 5,000 hours or even more right now. So there, there is no difference, but that's a good question. Got angel Suarez with another good rapid fire question here. Can I order a 54 with a convertible dinette in order to accommodate two more passengers similar to the, to the 44? We can look at it, but again, the max yeah. is going to be 12. <clears throat> so you can add more beds. I mean, there's. you can actually, in the salon, the uh, back cushions can come off. So if you have kids that can sleep there, you don't really need to convert it. Yeah, there's there's a good area, too, behind that couch on the starboard side. Yeah. That, uh, you can definitely can put, put a some cushion in bags there. at. Yeah. One more, and this is a really good question. Brian Climes, does Marine Max have any financing partnerships? Ron, uh, why don't you question. talk about that for from the charter standpoint? Because that was actually one of my questions for you, really quick, just two minutes. How do are, are a lot of people paying cash for these boats, or are they financing them out? It depends. Most are financing. It depends. We we got a yeah. couple of cash buyers, but yeah, you can finance. We do have uh, in house financing or a team here that candles that. Uh -huh. There are a couple of bank. Not all banks will finance these boats because they're going to be offshore, right? So uh -huh. if somebody defaults. But they know Marie Max, they know our program. So we do have three banks that we send. You know, you still have to qualify just like any other purchase. Uh, but typically people will take out a 15 year note uh, finance. They want to see the management agreement, the purchase agreement. But yeah, you can finance it. Now, our interest rates are so low right now that the guarantee payment we're going to give you if you go that route is going to be more than cover the note. So you're actually going to have positive cash flow. And most people apply that positive cash flow to the note. So at the end of the program, they're even in a better situation if they're going to trade or sell it or whatever. At that point, they can refinance even if they wanted to keep the boat. Damn, it's like a no-brainer. We try to make it that way. So I think we lost Nick. He just froze up there. But April Smith just checked in here, Raul. She says, howdy from the One-Eyed Dog Crew. Yes, I love the One-Eyed Dog Crew. Absolutely. Larry, Larry and April. Yes. Yep. So they did the, so, uh, they did the great loop, right? They did. They, yep. They did the great loop. So they're an example too of somebody that chartered first before they bought a boat. I, I happen to be get lucky and sold them that boat. There are 44 that they're on now. Nice. I, I hear, I hear Larry wants a 54, but April saying no. <laughs> <laughs> well. You never know, right? That's right. That's right. So, I mean, like you said, things you got to be looking way down the road right now. So like another year out there. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Hey, you missed it, Nick. April <laughs> from the One-Eyed Dog Crew just said hello. She just checked in here. So I don't know if they're over in your marina now or not. Oh, no. April and Larry. Yeah. yeah. So they're cruising. They're on the other side of Florida okay. right now. Yeah. Very cool. Their so daughter Wi-Fi is here. Yeah. It, yeah. She lives in Palm Harbor, right? Yeah, the daughter was. Yeah, so she was just there yesterday. So this Wi-Fi, as everybody knows, is an absolute gremlin with me, but I've got great <laughs> news because starting next week, Keith and I are going to be rocking and rolling <clears throat> again in person together, and I am looking forward to, one, using your Wi-Fi, and two, getting a chance to hang out again and, and continue this Boating Tips Live. Yeah, actually, we're going to sit out next week, Nick. That's Memorial Day. 
And we just want to say thank you to all the veterans out there Absolutely. and uh, absolutely to everybody that's sacrificed for this great country and all the, all they've done, you know, so everybody have a safe, happy, you know, remembrance, uh, you know, think, think back and, and just say thank you, you know? Absolutely. For sure. Well, Raul, well, you this want to take us on out of here, Nick? I'll take us out. Yeah. It's, uh, want to tell everybody, them, wanna you're everybody gonna tell them where they can get more info. Yeah, sure. For sure. So somebody behind the scenes ought to put a little, uh, link up in there. The man behind the curtain or, or lady behind the curtain. Go ahead and, uh, post that link to the Marine Max vacations sure. and the charter yacht ownership program. If we could also put Raul's information, down Go ahead, Robert, what is bottom. it? So it's just, at least it's out here audible wise. So it is uh mariemaxvacations.com. You can go in there, you can request brochures. There's a page on uh frequently you can download frequently asked questions about the ownership program. You can request more information and then I can send you sample performance so you can see, you know, for the people that want to look at what numbers look like. Uh, I will tell you 90% of the owners have charter before, so they get to see the operation, get to see the boats uh, before they buy into the program. So, And then I'm usually pretty good about responding and talking to you about the different options. Tammy's got your back. Tammy Worthing just jumped in here and she put all the links in there. I know it's it's kind of weird because it's not showing up on our our screens on here on the program that we're using. So. Nick and I are having to kind of watch it on our phones here, which may look seem a little awkward, but okay. so so it's on there now though for the for the replays. Great. Thank you, Keith. So Raul, thank you, man. It's great <coughs> seeing you. I learned okay. a lot, man. I'm just I need to get down there and get on one of those, you know. Yeah, you do. Let's go. We can lead one of those flotillas. We gotta get that sorted to a flotilla. Yep. Absolutely. Good. Colin Good. and I have uh, we actually talked about it, but then COVID kind of knocked that down. But I think uh, maybe this winter could Sounds be uh, could be a good thing. We'd love to have you. Better plan early, though. It's yep. picking up like crazy. I'm sure. So, <laughs> well, once again, thanks everybody for taking the time and and watching this with us. Uh, like Nick said earlier in the in the program when we first started, uh, anywhere you you listen to your blogs, your you know Apple Music or or whatever, uh, you'll be able to get us there and uh, YouTube and Facebook. So once again, thank you. Thanks, Raul. I'll say thanks for Nick. We lost him. His Wi-Fi down here at the store is not the best. And uh, happy Memorial Day, everybody. Be safe out there. We'll see you out on the water. Yeah.